it's fab. Today I'm going to be widening the original wheels on the Chevette. Uh, lots of people commented saying that I should uh, ban the original wheels because people like them and uh, I agree I like the wheels so the plan is to widen these but I'm not going to ban them. I have, uh, I've done lo loads of banded steels in the past. I made like a jig thing for making them and but what is available for this size of wheel is what's in this box. It's from uh, John Brown Wheels. And that is a seven inch wide, 13 diameter uh, wheel barrel, obviously. Um, they, they make these for doing the Lotus Cortina wheels so you cut your original centers out and um, just weld them into these. These are uh, covered in filth. These were for Ford wheels. Uh, these are Vauxhall wheels so I just asked for the inner dimension of this. Um, and then obviously you need to measure the wheel to check that it's right. But obviously getting inside here with a tape measure and actually getting an accurate measurement can be quite difficult. So what I'd do is just get two, two straight pieces of something and then just like wiggle it side to side until it's, you know it's tight. So I know that that there is the inside measurement of the wheel. And then it's going to be much easier to just measure that with a tape and get an accurate reading than it is trying to bend the tape in there. Or I can just check with my wheel that it fits in there and it does. So these were um, £35 each. So, um, for the effort it takes to actually do all the banding, um, this is probably going to be a better way of doing it. Uh, well, it is a better way of doing it because this is, this is actually how the wheels are made from the factory anyway. So, also the benefit of doing it this way is the added width is on this outside piece. Whereas when you band the wheels, you add the width onto this inner step so you get so if I was to band that wheel it would be banded on that inner edge where it meets this the center of the wheel it wouldn't be banded on this outer edge so you would have a step in it whereas these these don't have a step it's going to look more like a proper deep flat dish wheel like an alloy deep dish wheel would look you can band it that way, it's just a lot harder to do um, than it is to do the, the inner lip. So the, the, the centre of this wheel is held in with four welds inside here. Some of these are also spot welded to the inner piece so you would have to look on the inside of the wheel to see if um, there's spot welds and welds on this bit and then if there is you're obviously going to have to drill the spot welds and cut the welds. These ones there's no spot welds so we're just going to cut these welds off and hammer the centres out.
But what I'll probably do is uh, use my jig that I made for banding the steel wheels as a uh, as a way of checking that these are running true but obviously we want to get these like tacked and then we need to fit them onto the jig and spin them and check that everything's running true and there's nothing to say that this folded over edge here is perfectly true to this inner edge that the tyre actually sits on so you could potentially sit this flat sit that flat, weld it on and then the, your like datum, if you like, is then this folded edge rather than this inner edge where the tire sits. Because this is, this, is the, this is the edge that needs to be true with the hub face. So that's what we need to make sure is uh, all correct. What I need to do now is um, I can see it's actually just that bit there where it's um, been welded. So I've measured off the back of the original wheels because I want the back spacing to be exactly the same as the old wheels and I know I'm not going to get any clearance issues with anything hitting on the inside. And then the additional uh, two inches will just be added to the outside. So, what I'm going to do is make something to hold this at the exact same height. So, I'm just going to cut a piece out on the plasma table that I can bolt to that. I'll probably weld a piece of bar in there and that will just sit down at the same height in every wheel. But if you wanted to do it at home, how I would do it would be to just get your wheel set at the, obviously the height you want it and then find four points on the wheel or three and then measure off a straight edge and tack it get three or four tacks on it then bolt it onto the car and spin the wheel and see if it's true and you're going to be able to just cut a tack, tap it around, re-weld it and you'll be able to get it as true as it needs to be. Um, just doing that, I'm just going to go a bit further and make some extra bits that I don't really need to do just to, just to make things a little bit more interesting. One thing I noticed when I used to make banded steels was if you put a wheel onto the jig thing that I made and span it, there was always a little bit of a wobble. It was um, you sort of think that the wheel needs to be 100% exactly true, otherwise you're going to get wheel wobble or shake. Um, but a lot of the steel wheels, before any work was done on them, would have a very slight little wobble to them. So they probably don't need to be as straight as you would imagine because the tyre is going to take up some of that um, slack, but obviously you want to get them as good as you can get them. So that's our part. So that is going to bolt to that. This piece of tube will be welded in there and then just set that to whatever the right height is, drop that in. Another thing I'll be able to do is I could actually mount this center up then in the lathe 
and face this edge off using this and then I'll know that this edge is exactly parallel with this edge and then when I measure off of here I'll hopefully be able to get it right first time So what I'm going to do now is take that off of there, stick that in the lathe, face either side of that, or no, I just need to face that one side, bolt it back on, skim off the edge of that, stick it into its depth, check the measurements from there to the corners, and uh, weld it in. All this thing really is doing is just holding it up in place because one of these rims is a little bit bigger and it sort of drops down in so it would have been difficult but like I said it's not really necessary but all right so this thing here was my contraption for making banded steel wheels. I had a fixture that slotted in here which would hold the welding torch and I also had one which slotted in which held an angle grinder. This has got a little uh, like variable speed motor hooked up to it which drove that. Um, which drove the wheel so I could adjust the speed for the welding and um, you could get like a machine type finish weld all the way around the wheel but what I want to use it for is just to clamp the wheel on and spin it to see if it's true So this, this wheel, the first time I did it, there was like the, the, a bit little bit of a wibble wobble to it. And I thought, I think I can get it a bit better than that. And I cut the tacks off to get it as straight as it was when I started. There is a very slight wibble wobble, but it's on this outer edge. Um, and uh, what I ended up doing was, like just getting the two tacks on it by measuring and then putting it on here and just bumping it around until I got it good. Because if I tried to get all four, um, I just could not get it to run true. And then I've done eight welds on the back instead of four. That one's got a tiny wobble on this edge, but it's just this lip. Whereas the wheel itself, that one is at, you know, absolutely uh, perfect. This one's got like almost like a little up and down wobble, but like up and down twice per revolution. But it's very nice and true in a straight line. What would have been nice was if my lathe was big enough to fit the 
whole wheel in and then I could have just mounted the wheel up to this and uh, checked them all with that on the lathe but that's good enough um, like I said uh, earlier quite often wheels steel wheels have a wobble to them anyway um, and if you've ever like jacked a car up and and run the car with the wheels spinning quite often you'll notice like a wobble in the wheel so that you wouldn't notice on the road but when you visually look at it there is a little bit of a wobble there so I think these are all going to be absolutely fine um, but we'll see when uh, obviously once they get their tyres and um, tyres fitted and balanced but I need to get them blasted and powder coated first so I'm a Right, so that is uh, the wheels sorted. That was actually way more work than uh, I initially thought it was going to be. I thought that was only going to take me a couple of hours. And uh, yeah, I spent a lot, lot of time uh, on these. Oh, and congratulations to Sean Fox who won the uh, won the Op Trail Crystal. Obviously not this one. He got a nice new one. Thanks to everyone who entered that. I'm going to do one for one of these, an MP200. I think that is one of the best machines you can get for its price and its size and what it can do. It's got a pulse function, a pulse MIG, which is like a spray arc, which I use all the time for doing any like thicker, heavier stuff and there aren't many other machines that size and price. I think that machine's like 1800 to buy. I don't think there are any other machines that have that function that are around that price. Uh, and you can do aluminium, steel, uh, and you can weld some pretty thick stuff with that. And it's uh, still a single phase machine. So that'll be up on my website, urchfab.com. Go check it out if you're interested in, in that. And if you wanna, check out the details of, of these machines you can go onto the Inverter Fusion website and uh, check them out, check out the spec and stuff but I've been using that for the past few years and I, yeah, like, I, I really rate it, I think, it's, uh, I think it's one of the best machines you can get for your money. Yeah so the wheels are done, you could definitely do this with very basic limited tools, an angle grinder and a welder, and just take your time with the measuring. But obviously, you know, now I've got the original Vauxhall wheel with a nice deep dish on it, so I, I think well worth the effort. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. Just watch him, see you on the next one.